Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about the Wix Forms app. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create forms and place it on your website and add design. Now, I do wanna note that this tutorial is gonna work in both Wix and Wix Studio, so it doesn't matter which editor you use, you should still be able to follow this tutorial. Now here I am in Wix Studio and here I just have like a very, very basic section where on the left, we have a little bit of content telling people to fill out the form, which will be over here on the right hand side. Now I will say in the beginning, we're gonna start a little more basic by showing you how to build a form, how to edit a form and how to design the form. But I implore you to stay to the end because we are gonna be covering things like creating a multi-page form and even creating conditional rules like if and else statements. So let's say if a user selects X from a dropdown, then an X field will appear for the user to fill out additional content. So we're gonna be creating stuff like that in today's video. So again, stick around to the end to find out how to create some of those more advanced features with this app. But like I said before, we're gonna add a form over here on the right hand side. For now, let's go ahead and keep it simple. So we're gonna come over to the add panel, go to contact and forms. And right here, we have the option to create a form add an existing form, which we don't currently have. And then down here, we also have several pre-built. So if you wanna add a newsletter sign up, there's a form for that. Uh, if you have an e-commerce store and you wanna include products in the form, you can do that here. There's donations and there's different types of forms. But for today's video, we're just gonna add this very basic contact form right here. And we're just gonna drag it out and place it in the right grid cell here. And it's gonna add the app to our website and add the form. Now, when we click on the form, you're gonna notice an option in the action bar to edit the form. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and maybe edit the design here a little bit. So I'm gonna go into the settings and go over to design. Now I will say, when we have multiple forms built out, we can easily switch between which form we want to display here in this section. We also have things like layout tools, so we can decide the padding for the top and bottom and then spacing between rows and columns, so that's pretty nice. But like I said before, we're just gonna go over to the design and maybe change the design a little bit more. So for the background color, I'm just gonna set this to white. I'm also gonna remove the background corner radius here. And then actually for the background color, I'm gonna set this to maybe like 10%, something really low. And that's gonna kind of match like the vibe that we're going for for the section. And I'm gonna go back uh, for the form fields. I'm gonna go ahead and set the fill opacity to zero. I'm gonna set the corner radius to zero. Uh, for the checked option, I'm leave this as green, but then we're gonna come over here to the text and I'm just gonna set all of these to white. Okay. Uh, for the placeholder and description stuff, I might do something a little bit lighter. Okay. And I will also say I do want there to be a border on these fields. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to white. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. If we scroll up a little bit, we can actually switch the state from regular to hover. And all I'm going to do with this is maybe up the opacity to 20%. And border, of course, we're gonna make it make sure it's still white. And then for air, we're just gonna leave this as is. And we'll go back. For the buttons, like the submit button, I don't want there to be a corner radius, so I'm just gonna remove that. Okay. For the hover state, I think that looks pretty good. We might need to do that for the next one as well, but that looks pretty good. For the back button, we'll go ahead and set these to white. which I know you can't see it right now, but when we have a multi-page form, we're gonna have a next and back button. So I'm just trying to prepare for that a little bit. Um, and then for the header and paragraph, let's also go ahead and set these to white as well. Okay, so now the design of our form is easily set up here and it looks pretty clean. But now let's go ahead and press edit form. So let's say we like the first name, we like the last name, we like the email, we like a message, but maybe we wanna add a phone number and maybe we don't want the first name and last name to take up the entire row here. So let's go ahead and press edit form. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up the dashboard and open up our form. So like I mentioned before, maybe we don't want the first name to take up the full row and we don't want the last name to take up the full row. So what we can easily do is just shrink this down We'll shrink this down too, and then we'll just simply move it right there. 
And then maybe we want to add a phone number to the form, just like that. And as you can see right here, when we, when we click on email, you can see there's a little asterisk next to it. And that basically tells us that it is a required field. So if we turn this off, you'll notice the asterisk disappears. And that means someone can submit the form without filling in this input. So it's typically a good idea to leave this one required. And also you might want their name to be required as well. Just so if you need to reach back out to them via email, you know who to address the email to. Also, if we come over into the settings, just so we can get over with the settings portion really quickly, up at the very top, we have form name. For the required fields, we can leave it as an asterisk, or we can even make it a label that says required. And then when the user submits the form, we can either show a message and we can change the message here. And then for the display time of the message, we can set it to a certain amount of time, or we can set it to always. Um, typically, if you're going to leave this at custom, I wouldn't go any shorter than maybe five seconds, or you can even always set it to always if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and move on and we're going to go back over to edit here. Now, kind of like what I showed you with the phone number, we just grabbed a field type from over here and we dragged it over into our form and it was just as easy as that, right? Um, but one thing I will note is all of these other fields here in the form have a placeholder text. However, when we added the phone number, it didn't. So if we select the phone and come over here to placeholder text, we can toggle this on. And we, just like that, there's an option that says enter your phone number. Perfect. And I think that looks really, really nice. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of the different types of fields that you can add to the form because there are so many, but I do wanna maybe cover some of the more general ones that you'll wanna use. So for example, if you were asking for someone's social media or website or something like that, you can add a link field and you can change the field title to say maybe your website. And just like that, you can see it updated here. And then for the placeholder text, just like that, you can have like a fake email or fake domain entered here. And I think that looks really nice. Another option that you might need is the upload file here. So this allows users to upload videos, images, audio, and documents. Then underneath that, some more common ones that you might need is the choice one. So we got single choice and multi-choice. Single choice, just as it sounds, is a single choice. If we switch on over to the preview tab, someone can click this and that's their choice, but if they select option two, it unselects the first choice. So it's a single choice. Whereas multi-choice, if we go in preview, allows the user to select multiple choices, right? One thing I do like about the choice option here is if here we can add our different options and we can add as many as we want, but in addition, we can even add an other option if we wanted to. And this allows the user, if selected, to then go ahead and add their other option. Next to that, we then have a drop down option, which I do like this one because just like with the multi choice and single choice, you can add your different options here. And then the user can just simply select which one they want to choose. So it's a very simple form. Underneath that, we have checkbox. So let's say you want to have an option that people can sign up for your newsletter with it or agree to sign up for their newsletter. So you can have this little checkbox. And you can even have it checked by default. You can also maybe make this as something like, I have read your privacy policy and make it something like that where they have to agree to it. And then you can even link to your privacy policy page if you wanted to. So as you can see, this is a pretty nice system that we have going. The only other things that I will mention is we have like the date and date and time stuff right here. So if I can just grab a date, you can see like they can enter in the month, day, year. If we add the date picker, then this one is a little bit different. It's kind of like the same thing where someone can select the day, month, year. However, with this one, it's actually like a, like a little calendar. So someone can select it like that. And then with these, there are different settings that you can choose from. So. If we go to the advanced settings here, we can accept all dates or past dates or future dates. If you're asking for someone's birthday or something, you are of course gonna to wanna to select past because you don't want someone selecting a date from the future because if that's their birthday, then they weren't born yet. And then 
You can also set to the first day of the week. I typically like to select Sunday there. And then with this date, month, year option here, you can also do the same thing with the accepted dates, past or future. So that's kind of nice as well. But as for the different field types, that's all I'm gonna really cover today. Um, and honestly, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of these other ones because now I kind of want to show you guys how to create a page, a secondary page form. And maybe we want to maybe uh, add like a secondary page where we get some more information about what they're reaching out for. So for example, let's go ahead and go over here to the left hand side, you're going to see an option for pages. And we're just going to add a page. I typically like to rename my pages by pressing the three dots and pressing rename. And I'm just gonna call this one general info. And then for this one, I don't really know what information we're trying to get on this page. It's just an example tutorial. So I'm just gonna call this one more info. But just like that, we're able to create a multi-page form. So as you can see right here, here's our general info page. And then here's our more info page. So right down here, we're gonna add some more things. So maybe we do want the phone number. Maybe we do want a website. And then maybe we do want to have some sort of drop down option here. So maybe this drop down can say industry. And this is a terrible example, but let's say this one is law and this one is design or something like that. And so we have these two different options and just for example, let's go ahead and grab a short answer, which is basically just a normal field that is completely blank. It's not a phone number, email, name, or anything. And you can basically make this whatever you want. So for this one, I'm gonna make this one a law question. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab another one down here and I'm gonna select, I'm gonna say this one is a design question. Obviously, we have set our dropdown from law and design, and then we have a law question and a design question. If someone selects design, maybe we don't want to show the law question. Or maybe if they do select law, we don't want to show the design question, right? And that is exactly where these rules come in over here. So right above where pages is, there's going to be an option for rule. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a brand new rule. What we're going to do is grab this industry. So we're going to say if this field, which we want to grab the industry field, and we want to say is equal to, and we're going to say law, then what do we want to happen? What we want to do is we want to grab the law question, and we're going to set this to shown. Right here, it's going to be like, hey, it's already shown. Do you want to make it hidden? So what we're going to do is we're going to press hide field, and we're going to press save. So just like that, now the law question is now hidden. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select on the design question. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-hide this. So I'm just gonna click the little eyeball there and now it's a hidden question. And now we can go ahead and add a brand new rule. And we're gonna say if industry is equal to design, then maybe we want to show the design question. So I'm gonna set this to show and press save. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and press save. I want to close out of this. And what I'm going to do is just simply preview our form here. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and press the next page and you're going to see the we can easily go back and forth between the different pages with the multi-page form, which I think is really nice. But now let's go ahead and check the conditional rule that we created. So we're going to go down to industry and let's go ahead and select law. Just like that, the law question now appears, but let's say we want to switch to design. Now our design question now appears. So as you can see, it's really easy to create different rules and apply them to your form. So it can be a very dynamic form based on the selections your users do within your form. And of course, the design is very easy. And another thing I wanna mention is if you ever want to, let's say edit the form for mobile, what you can do is open up your form and choose the layout and switch to mobile. And then maybe with mobile, we can do something like this, where maybe we still want the first and last name to be kind of on the same row. So we can do something like that. 
And that's kind of the last thing I wanted to show you with this. You can actually edit the mobile version of your form. So that's kind of nice. But as you can see, this form app is quite in depth. You can create multi-page forms. You can create conditional rules. The design is easy to set up. You can create different versions of the form for mobile. All of it is really easy to do, and it's just built right into Wix, and it can be used for Wix Studio or the classic Wix editor as well. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one.